I'm excited to talk to you about um, what it is you are so passionate about because it's something that I don't really I don't think I have an issue with and I don't know many people that do but apparently it is an issue so tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into working with dry eyes yeah I'd love to thanks first of all for having me on yeah you're welcome um, yeah and you know dry eyes we were kind of talking about this a little bit beforehand but to, to break it down so I, I graduated in 2010 my wife graduated in 2011 from the Ohio State College of Optometry, and we started working for my uncle in Columbus, Ohio. And while working for him, he had a dry eye center. Um, dry eye was pretty new at that time and still kind of is. It's still, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's very researched, a lot of new data coming out every single year. But while working for him, um, we enjoyed our time with him. I worked for him for about 13 years total. Mm -hmm. from when I first started with him as an undergrad all the way up through grad school, for, through optometry school, then worked for him for about four years or five years after. And we moved down to South Carolina because we just felt like something was missing while working for him. So we quit our jobs. We moved across the country from Ohio to South Carolina, started two practices of our own, and we actually wanted to start a pediatric clinic. Um, but in South Carolina, it's a very aging demographic. And so where mm -hmm. we placed our two practices, we didn't see a lot of kids and we saw a lot of geriatrics. And with geriatrics comes a lot of disease. So we saw a ton of diabetics and a ton of glaucoma patients, macular degeneration. These are all eye diseases that you get usually when you're older. Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's not limited to age, but it, it does happen as we age, just like everything else. And then of course, with that comes dry eye. And we also came out with a, a product-based business online at the same time as starting these two practices. And we called that I Love. And we actually started out as a sunglass company. So our website is I love the sun.com. And that was because we were a sunglass company first. And now okay. we're more of this dry eye company. Um, we still have a couple pairs of sunglasses, but we've kind of shifted all to products that help heal your body naturally and especially focus around the eyelid area and the eye area. And as we were, we became this dry eye company and we started coming out with dry eye products as a result of a product that we were selling in our practice it's called Avanova and we were selling about 10 of them a day and a great product and still love the company. Oh, I don't love the company, but I still love the product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody came to me one day and was just like, Hey, you prescribed this to me. It was $30 a month. Now it's $300 a month. And I was like, wow. Okay. Oh She's like, can you make this? And I was like, yeah, let's look into it. So we um, looked into it and found a manufacturer to manufacture it for us. And that's how our hydrate line of products was born. And that's how we started coming out with dry eye products. But we kind of fell into the dry eye part of things just because it was in, my, in the back of my brain from my old practice. And then when we wanted to do pediatrics, you know, God told us other things. You're going to see geriatrics and then dry eye came with that. So we sold mm -hmm. a lot of that product. And it was very fulfilling to see a dry eye customer or a dry eye patient when you take them through this journey, this dry eye journey, and to get them from completely debilitated, not being able to work anymore, not being able to leave their house to functioning in a normal life again. Now to kind of go into that story of when we were in South Carolina and we wanted to have children. So I, I promised my wife right when we moved to South Carolina that we could start trying and we did, but nothing happened. And so after about five months of trying, we got it looked at and we were diagnosed with infertility. Mm -hmm. um, and so we explored that route with Western medicine. We did about two and a half years of infertility treatments and did everything but IVF. Um, the day of our IVF appointment, I just, something just didn't feel right. And I told my wife when we woke up, I said, cancel the appointment. I, this just doesn't feel right. It's not the route we're supposed to take. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we actually explored other options and we found Eastern medicine. And we found an acupuncturist who also knew a lot about herbals and supplements. And after three months of seeing him, we were pregnant. And wow. so a three-year battle and then three months of Eastern medicine changed everything. So with that kind of, it shifted my mind. So I'm a mm -hmm. Western medicine trained doctor. So is my wife. And then we're just like, if we're, if we, we fought this for three years in the Western medicine modality, and then three months in Eastern medicine, and it changed everything. Why can't we apply this to something like dry eye? And so we started applying these principles to dry eye sufferers and the results were amazing. And that's why we wrote a book called Rethinking Dry Eye Treatment, because it doesn't talk to you about which drops are best to take 
which this is best to take. Mm -hmm. It talks about healing your body from the inside out. So we talk about decreasing inflammation to heal your eyes, treating your dry eye as a symptom to an overall systemic issue of inflammation. And I know you talk about inflammation a lot. Mm -hmm. And it is just so key that all of our system, our whole body is just linked. And if we just treat the body as inflamed with any disease, you can, you can treat it using the same principles. So I always tell people that the rethinking dry eye treatment part, you could replace dry eye with any disease and it's rethinking diabetic treatment, high blood pressure treatment, cholesterol treatment, any disease can mm -hmm. go in there because we're, what we're doing is just battling inflammation. So to answer your question, how'd I get into dry eye? Mm -hmm. We fell into it and then we loved the results that were coming as a result of helping these people. And so we went all in and now we don't practice anymore. We sold our practices about three years ago. And now we're all into this online space and we've created, we wrote a book about it. We've created a boot camp about it. The boot camp is just eight weeks teaching you one simple step. It's free, one simple step per week to change in your life, to impact your life, to decrease that inflammation. And we've sent thousands through that with amazing results. So it's, I fell back into it, but I've got addicted to the results that we're providing for patients and we're on a mission to heal 1 million dry eye sufferers naturally. Well, yeah, that's quite the path to get, get to helping people <laughs> with dry eye and not even doing your normal practice anymore. That's, that's quite a story, but that's usually how things happen. And we, if we just kind of listen to our, our guidance and our, our gut reactions and feelings to things, um, we get to the place where we're supposed to be. So that's a, that's a really great story. So when we dig into dry eye in that inflammatory process, and like I said in the beginning, I, I don't have, I don't think I have that condition, um, but I'd like to have you go through some of the most common symptoms um, that people are dealing with when they have dry eye. So what are yeah. some symptoms? Or maybe, maybe I have some that I, you know, can, you might. I don't so, know if I have them, yeah. Yeah, the most common symptom is obviously dryness. And so mm -hmm. if your eyes just feel dry, that's the most obvious symptoms, but other symptoms include grittiness. So if you feel like you have sand or grit in your eyes, we hear mm -hmm. that a lot foreign body sensation. So it's feeling like there's something there in your eye. Um, if you wake up with crusties on your eye, I mean, we all wake up with a little crusty, but if mm -hmm. your eyes are matted shut when you wake up, mm -hmm. that can be a sign of what's called blepharitis or inflammation of the eyelids. Mm -hmm. And so your eyelids and your eyes are so connected in that regard. Um, but another common one that people actually overlook is your eyes actually water more as a result of having dry eye. And the reason that is, is because we talked about the eyelids, how they're connected to, to the eye and to dry eye as well, is we have three layers of our tear film. And the third layer of our tear film is what's called the oil layer or the mybum layer. Okay. And the oil layer comes from your mybomian glands. These are just oil glands. You have 30 on top, 30 on bottom approximately of your eyelids. And so if your eyelids are inflamed and your eyelids aren't working properly, the oil is not gonna get out onto the eye. And so if the oil's not on the eye, what happens is your tear film breaks up very easily. Okay. And when the tear film breaks up, you get irritation. You feel like there's something in your eye and your eye tells your brain, I need more tears. So it actually, your brain then tells your lacrimal gland, which sits up in your eyelid, mm -hmm. different type of gland to water more. Mm -hmm. And so our eyes start to water more as a result of having dry eye, but you're getting the wrong layer of the tear. You're getting the watery layer of the tear versus the oil layer of the tear. So we base our treatment regimen around getting your eyelid inflammation reduced first, and then getting your body, your systemic inflammation reduced as well on top of that. And so to go back to your symptoms questions, grittiness, mm -hmm. foreign body sensation, dryness, itchiness, eyes matted shut when you wake up, your eyes are watering too much. Those are kind of the main symptoms around dry eye. Okay, so I think a lot of people listening can can relate to, you know, the allergy eye feeling and there's a lot of overlapping symptoms there for sure. And that is absolutely, um, you know, a symptom that I would say that I have maybe more seasonally. But um, it, is that something that is just common with allergies? And when you have, you know, when you're in practice, if you see people come in and they have the, you know, inflammation under the eyelids and their redness and the itchy and stuff like that, is that a part of dry eye or does dry eye develop as a condition out of chronic allergies? Do you ever see that or yeah. how does that So work? yes to both of those. So yeah, okay. when I have a patient in my chair and they're complaining to me that their eyes irritated and they have those symptoms, because yeah, the symptoms are very similar to allergies, 
I always ask them to kind of see what route we want to go down. And it might be both routes, but I always ask them, Does, do your eyes itch more or do they burn more? And usually that can take me down one path or the other. If they say both, then we have to deal with both, which is okay too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I have allergies pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And when I have itchy season, I usually keep my eyelids a lot cleaner because debris gets all the pollens and everything get caught in your eyelashes. That's the, the job of your eyelashes, but mm -hmm. that's going to create more itchiness. But then I also use a drop called pad a day and it's now mm -hmm. over the counter. So it used to be prescription. It's once a day. I don't like it to use it a lot because it does have a preservative in it. Um, I don't like drops with preservatives, but there's no allergy drop out on the market yet mm -hmm. that is preservative free. So I use pad a day as needed just for that itch. Um, and then I just make sure I keep my eyelids really clean. And then going down the dry eye route, we'll probably talk more about the treatment in just a little bit, but I mm -hmm. won't go down that route yet. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I, I have used pad a day and it is kind of a, a relief. It does really feel good. Um, I just try to use it as minimal as possible. Like you said, there's preservatives and that kind of thing. Um, so when you are, you know, creating this novel approach to dry eye treatment, how is it different than when, you know, if I go to my eye doctor tomorrow and I have dry eye, what are they going to do versus what you're doing? Yeah. So it's, I wouldn't even call it a novel approach. It's just taking like healthy living and mm -hmm. making it simple. My, somebody told me my superpower once was that I take incredibly complex subjects and just break them down and then to make them incredibly simple. Right. And that's all we've done is we've, we've taken the, the information that we've learned from, from everybody that's out there about health and wellness and from, mm -hmm. you know, nutritionists and dietitians and everything like that, and just broken it down into a simple program that can help you live your fullest life. And we just target dry eye specifically because we think of dry eye as a symptom to an overall inflammation of the body. And that's, that's where the, the different mindset because most doctors, and as, as a doctor, I was trained this way, that you have this disease, you take this medication. Right. And we, we kind of take a step back and just be like, well, if we take this medication, you're just covering up a symptom to this disease, which you're creating 10 more symptoms on the back end because of the side effects of this, this drop. So why don't we just figure out what's causing the disease in the first place and address that instead? Mm -hmm. And it, it can be very simple. I mean, the, the first step that we tell people to do in the dry eye boot camp challenge is that we tell them to replace their breakfast with a green smoothie. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do that is because people don't like things taken away from them. Right. And so what we do is we replace. So when we add that green smoothie in, it causes this cascade effect of healthier choices throughout the day, but it gets rid of the most inflammatory meal of the day. Mm -hmm. Breakfast, everything for breakfast is inflammatory, mm -hmm. cereal bagels, toast, um, you know, sausage, bacon, all the meats, and everything is inflammatory that we eat for breakfast. And so if we take that away and replace it with a green smoothie, a nice alkalizing to the body, disease-fighting, cancer-fighting, green smoothie, that's mm -hmm. going to just cause a cascade of events in your body that's going to make you feel better, but it's also going to decrease the inflammation. And what we find is after about two and a half weeks of that, people notice a huge difference with how their eyes are feeling just by that. And they get addicted to the smoothies because your body craves whatever you eat. So if you eat pizza every day, you're going to crave pizza and you're going to want pizza. If you eat mm -hmm. broccoli every day, you're going to crave broccoli and you're going to eat broccoli. Right. And so I think I answered your question there. Yeah, you did. It's different. <laughs> it's, a, it's because it's kind of like anything. Most people that I talk to, everybody I've interviewed for this podcast is more in that functional mindset where it's what's the root cause, you know, why are your eyes dry versus, okay, you've got dry eyes, let's just give you a medication or, or something like that. So it's a more proactive approach rather than a reactive approach, um, 100%. a reactive yeah. approach. Yeah. So it's one of those things that um, it, it just makes sense to me. And I know with my issues with thyroid cancer and I just was always questioning, you know, well, why is it like that? Why are we just, you know, covering things up or masking symptoms? Because it was one symptom after the other and, you know, taking antidepressants and anti-anxieties and, um, you know, gut health stuff, you know, medications for gut health, you know, wh why are we just covering that up? What's causing this? And so that's why I got into what I'm doing too. So um, that it's just, it just makes so much more sense to me, <laughs> to me. And you, you actually had a, you know, very big um, example of that with your fertility issues with you and your wife and how 
the more proactive approach was a lot more successful and a lot more effective in, in a short amount of time. So getting, the, getting that inflammation out of the person's body, like you said, just a simple step, you know, go back to basics, a green smoothie, it has a ton of antioxidants in it, just loads of nutrition, better absorption in the body and no inflammation caused by the standard American breakfast that are, you know, usually marketed to us. So that just seems like a very simple approach, very simple approach and very doable for your, your patients. And it sounds like um, people have great success with it too in a short time. Yeah. And the, the, the problem that we have as practitioners is that you just don't have the time to go over everything. Whereas in like a functional medicine doctor that will go over this with you or a nutritionist, mm -hmm. they will take the time to do it because you're paying them for the hours that you're with them. I know right. that my functional medicine doctor, whenever I have an appointment with them, I'm usually with them for three hours. Yeah. And so it's not a short appointment and it's, it's usually a pretty detailed exam, but you're, you're going to pay for it. It's going to cost you more, but mm -hmm. you're going to get more out of it than just here, take these pills. And that's, right. that's the problem with our healthcare system is that we don't have, we don't have the time anymore to mm -hmm. be able to spend with the patient to get to know them. It's all about, you know, getting in and out because insurance reimbursements are going down and pharmaceutical companies are pushing this drug. And so I didn't like that world anymore. And that's why we got out of it. Number one, or not number one, but one of the reasons we got out, but mm -hmm. as a Western medicine practitioner, you just don't have the time anymore to be able to go over all this stuff, all this diet and decreasing toxins and everything. Yeah. And it leaves the patient in there. You feel like you've been through the ringer. You've got a 10 minute, maybe 15 minute appointment with your provider and you've gotten no questions answered. You feel like you're rushed and you come out, if you're struggling with things, you feel like, you know, defeated and you feel like you're never really going to get the help. And so that's the, the shift that people, I hope, are waking up to that it is worth you know, is worth spending, you know, it's usually a cash pay situation. It's worth, you know, spending that money for your health to actually get to the bottom of what's causing your issues rather than um, sort of being passed off with, with um, medication or just not enough time. So, but that's a whole nother podcast episode. We could go into, you know, functional medicine in general, but what I'd like you to talk about, this is something that I work with, with people. I am in, you know, in my programs and stuff, my one-on-ones is that, um, stress is such a huge factor and it has such a huge effect on our body. And I know that it's been talked about so much to the point where it almost is like, I think we're kind of desensitized to stress because our, our society is so stressed that we just, it's like, we don't recognize how bad it is for us. It's become normal. And so, you know, can you speak to stress's impact on what we're talking about here today and what you see with the people you're working, working with? Yeah, we actually get this question all the time in our community and it's, does stress have a role in my dry eye? Mm -hmm. And the answer is a definite yes. It has a role mm -hmm. in everything in your life because stress is a good thing if it's done right. It's, right. it's just like everything, you know, everything can be a good thing in your life if it's done right for the most part. Mm -hmm. But with stress, stress is made, stress comes from, you know, a, a hormone called cortisol Cortisol is very important for our life. If you see a bear in the woods, your cortisol is going to spike, your adrenaline is going to spike because it's a stressful situation and it's telling you to get out of there. So it's your fight or flight. You know, you're just trying to get out and cortisol is good for that. Adrenaline is good for that. Mm -hmm. But what's happening with our society is we're constantly anger. We're constantly angry. We mm -hmm. have rage inside of us all the time and it's creating this high level of cortisol that's just chronic over a long period of time. And so when we have this chronic stress, it increases inflammation in our body. And if we don't work constantly to bring that stress level down, then that chronic stress, number one, it's going to fatigue you a lot. Mm -hmm. And, but it's also just going to create this inflammation that's going to exacerbate your dry eye. And so we hear a lot of times in our community that, Every time I'm stressed out, my dry eye gets worse. And of course it is because right. you already have this chronic state of inflammation because you're stressed out. And then when you're stressed out even more, it creates even more inflammation. And then you're therefore having more dry eye symptoms and other things too. I mean, it's not just dry eye, but your whole body is suffering as a result mm -hmm. of the stressful situation. So what we recommend, and this is like, I think week seven or eight in our boot camp, 
is that you figure out stressors. So we give them a list of like 10 stress th- or stress relieving tips and don't do them all. Pick right. one. Pick one that you like. My favorite one is something that we do every night and that's a gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. We write down three things that we're grateful for that day. It takes less than one minute and it makes you look at the good of the day. Mm-hmm. Number two, stop watching the news. Oh, the yeah. news is so polarized now that it just it's either going to make you angry in the way that, yes, that's what I'm talking about, or it's going to make you angry like what is happening in this world. Right. It's, even, the, the, even if the news agrees with you, it's still going to make you stressed mm-hmm. because of whatever it's doing. And so those are kind of two big ones that we do. Um, I meditate 20 minutes every morning. You don't have to do that. Meditate mm-hmm. for one minute. 30 seconds, take some deep breaths. That's all you need to do. Just Mm -hmm. some quiet time to yourself. And like things like stretching, stretching is a form of meditation, yoga. Um, You don't have to do all of this stuff. Just pick one. Gratitude journaling is by by far the easiest. And so, and then um, I always recommend sunshine in the morning. Go outside, get some Mm -hmm. sunshine in the morning. Not always possible, but you can, it helps. And it helps with your sleep. And then finally, an hour before you go to bed, turn off your phone turn off mm-hmm. your TV, read a paper book, yeah. just have this. So we, we have a lot of us have a morning routine, but like nobody has a bedtime routine. And you know, if you have kids, you're like, we have to keep the kids on the bedtime routine because it helps them sleep better. But then as an adult, we're just sitting there on our phones in yeah, bed. It just goes out the window. <laughs> exactly. And so yeah. having a bedtime routine, mine, when I'm good at it, um, I, I do fail too is you know at 8 30 everything gets shut off all electronics computer tv everything phone gets plugged in put into airplane mode and that's at 8 30 and then i'll either do some like stretching some yoga i'll read a paper book and then i'm usually asleep by 9 30 because i wake mm-hmm. up at 5 30 mm-hmm. and so that hour of no digital electronic devices no notifications no mindless scrolling on facebook really tells your brain to shut down it starts increasing your melatonin production and I'm sure we can get into this a lot more, but it gets you away from artificial blue light. Right. And blue light is great. Blue light is one of the best sources of, let's say, energy because sun comes up in the morning, lots of blue light. The sun is the most abundant source of blue light. Mm-hmm. Sun goes down at night, blue light's gone, except it's on our screens. And so if you're on your screens, blue light, you're exposing yourself to it. And the importance of blue light is that when blue light gets eliminated, our body increases melatonin production. Right. Melatonin, melatonin helps us sleep and get to that deep rest. So if you're on your phone or your computer or your TV right before you go to bed, you're actually taking a lot longer to get to that REM sleep, to get to that deep sleep. And so therefore, you're not sleeping as well. And going back to stress, your, your stress levels are going to be increased because you're not sleeping as well. Your, your body and your mind hasn't been restored as well. So I kind of went off on a tangent about a lot more other things, but any no, questions about stress? Yeah. Yeah. So this, the stress and the sleep factor, I mean, that is, um, you know, goes hand in hand, but, you know, to your point, we have a bedtime routine for our kids and we're, you know, usually pretty strict on that. But for us, it's like, you kind of forget about it. And I was actually working with someone um, and going through their intake. We were, I always assess their sleep or their day night cycle, just to see where they are with that. So we can look at the stress impact that they're having on their, on their body and their symptoms. And this person was talking about this the first time. And the only time, frankly, since then that I've ever heard someone had like an hour ritual before they go to bed, they have this whole bedtime routine that they do without fail. It's like they're non-negotiable and you know there's a lot of other things that she needed to work on like quite a few other things but she had her sleep routine down just you know to your point it's probably as as good as what you're talking about with what, what you do with yours and i i rarely ever hear that that people have a, th- a thing where they kind of wind down at night and so her sleep was awesome so that is a unbelievable place to start when you're helping someone decrease their inflammation by because their stress is so much more well managed their blood sugars are more well managed which also then you know, has that impact on inflammation and stress so it's um it's something that is so important so i'm glad we went off on that little sleep tangent and the mm-hmm. blue light thing because that's a, a big thing people are talking about blue light all the time now like it's almost like it's a brand new thing <laughs> but you know understanding that connection between the blue light and melatonin production and everybody understands it seems like that melatonin 
is good for helping us sleep. And so if we can eliminate the blue light so we can boost up the melatonin, you know, we're going to do, do so, so much good for us for as far as um, being able to shut down and manage our stress. So I'm glad you brought that up. To go into that a little, just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, number one, if, if you take anything from that, remove all devices from your bedroom. Mm-hmm. The TV should not be in your bedroom. Bedroom is for sleep and sex only. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And to go back to melatonin, the reason I like to get that 20 minutes of sunshine before 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. is because that increases your serotonin in the morning. Right. And then serotonin is later converted to melatonin in your body. And so what you do in the morning, getting that sunshine in the morning is going to help you later on at sleep at night too. But then getting rid of the electronics an hour before bed is going to help too. So really trying to optimize your, your sleep is huge. That's kind of the, 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 the biggest thing you can do because sleep is so important for resting and decreasing that inflammation in your body. Mm -hmm. It's, it's probably where, I don't know, there's so many things that people should start with when they're trying to get their health back, but I know I've said like the number one thing, like a hundred (laughs) times. I know. So it's, it's all of the things, but we just can stack them all. And you know, one thing kind of goes into the other though. So that's, that's can help people not feel too overwhelmed. We don't want to stress people out (laughs) with all the things that you can do, but yeah, for sure. Sleep and stress go hand in hand. So you're, you're taking care of a lot of things just by getting sleep in check too. So um, that's a really, really good thing. So that brings to mind, you know, my next question and a lot of people with thyroid issues have this problem and actually a lot of people without thyroid issues have this problem but gut health is huge obviously for um, absorption of nutrients which is kind of what i'm looking at most of the time but and and i also look at it with regard you know and that comes back to nutrient deficiencies too but their mental health their anxiety their depression um all those things go right into to their level of gut health and I, I'm wanting to know if there's that connection between gut health and dry eye. You know, I don't know if there's any studies out there that directly say that gut health causes dry eye because I just mm-hmm. don't think they've been done. But what I, what I tell people to like envision is your gut is essentially an extension of your skin. Mm-hmm. It's the barrier from the outside world to the inside of your body. Now that seems like that doesn't make sense because your gut is inside your body, but actually your gut is just this tract Mm -hmm. that goes from your mouth and out. Mm -hmm. And what it allows through is you want the nutrients to go through, but you don't want the bad stuff to go through. But what happens is we, we eat these inflammatory foods, you know, processed foods and boxes and cans, things that aren't good for you. And it creates that leaky gut environment. Now, when you create a leaky gut environment, your things that should be kept in the the GI tract are getting out. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you let that stuff out of the GI tract, then you're going to cause inflammation. Same thing with blood. Blood is toxic to your body, but blood in blood vessels is where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if your blood vessels start to leak, that's when it can be fatal. So diabetic retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy is where your blood vessels are leaking in the back of your eye. Mm -hmm. That is from your diabetes being too out of control for too long. It causes tissue death. It causes blindness, causes all these problems as a result of blood getting out of your blood vessels. If we see this going on in the back of the eye, it's going on elsewhere. Same thing with your gut. If you're leaky, if you have a leaky gut, it's going to be causing inflammation in your body. Mm -hmm. You may not notice this inflammation, but it may be subtle, like a little bit of dryness in your eye. It could be a little arthritis in your knee. It could be that little rash that you have on the back of your arm. It could be Mm -hmm. eczema on your fingers. These are all things that I have dealt with. I have dealt with arthritis in my knees, in my elbows, in my wrists. I've dealt with eczema all over my face and my fingers. And ever since I've taken my diet more seriously, I thought I was eating healthy too. Right. I was, I was very big into lifting in college. I ate very healthy in college, but I always had eczema and I always had eczema on my face and I always had arthritis. So it made it hard. Mm-hmm. But when I became a vegetarian and not saying that your listeners need to do that, but I became a vegetarian in t- 2012. I eat meat probably once every month, once every two weeks or so, just mm-hmm. depends on how I'm feeling. Um, but when I did that, everything went away. Arthritis went away. My eczema is gone. You can't even detect where it was before. Mm-hmm. I used to have really bad dandruff, don't have dandruff anymore. Mm-hmm. And so these are all inflammatory conditions. And so you don't notice it because you've been living with it for so long that it just doesn't seem like it's a problem anymore. But when I got my gut right, 
that's when it all changed. And the biggest step that you can do to getting your gut right is leafy green vegetables. So smoothies, drinking those smoothies every morning can make a huge difference with a leaky gut. And it's going to take time. This isn't something that's going to go away overnight. The rash isn't going to go away. The arthritis isn't going to go away overnight. But if you stick with it, you'll be living a new life within a month and Mm -hmm. it will become addictive. And then you'll just want to keep going. So to go back to the gut issues, I 100% think it plays a key role because most of the time when we enroll somebody in our boot camp, and you know the, the the ones that come in that are already pretty healthy, they don't see the results quite as much. They do a little bit. But when I see those people that are very unhealthy, overweight, obese, and they start the program within like a week, they're already noticing huge improvements because They've never done anything like that. They haven't put that that amount of greens in their body. And I always tell them that the first 14 days is going to be unbearable and uncomfortable because Mm -hmm. your your body's not used to that. And you're going to have, you might be constipated, but you also might have diarrhea and gas. And then your your stomach's always going to be hurting and cramping because you're re you're reformulating everything in your gut. You're getting rid of these, these microbes that are, you know, they want the processed food. They're hijacking your brain to eat more sugar. Right. And you're trying to get rid of them to get the broccoli loving ones up. And it takes time. It takes weeks to months to years sometimes to mm-hmm. really, and it, it's a lifetime. I mean, I've been eight years vegetarian, pseudo vegetarian. And, um, you know, I feel better than I've ever felt as a result of this. And when I, st- when I go off my diet a little bit, I notice it big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the thing I think it's important to, have the listeners understand is that we have been sort of conditioned to think that when you're changing your 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 habits with regard especially to nutrition that you either are doing a program or you're not you're on one or you're not or you start a new one and then you stop and then it's got a finite um you know there's a finite aspect to it and it's not it is a it's not a linear process you're going to ebb and flow you're going to have um, good times and bad times with how you choose to proceed through your um, process. But when you're learning about how those foods are influencing your symptoms along the way, good or bad, you know, that's what keeps you going in that same trajectory. And that's where you start to heal. And so I think it's really important for listeners to understand that if you haven't learned one thing from listening to this podcast and a lot of the other podcasts you probably listen to is that you know, this is a, this is the long game. This is not a fad thing when you're trying to really get root cause healing to some of your conditions. I don't know if that's something you talk about with your people in your boot camp. that it's, you know, they're not going to just do this eight weeks and then they can just do whatever they were doing before that, you know? Yes. So we talk about how we're going to teach you eight things that are very simple, eight simple habits to implement into your life, to change your entire life. And so Mm -hmm. we always talk about how a diet is not a fad. It's not something that you're just going to go on and off like you were talking about. This right. is a life changing. And you know, your listeners are probably thinking like, I don't want to change. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to stop. Well, do you want the brain fog? Do you want the arthritis? Do you want the pain mm-hmm. that comes with the crappy foods? And believe me when I say that, whatever you eat, I said this earlier, but whatever you eat, you crave. And so when you switch your diet to drinking green smoothies, I crave green smoothies. And when I don't get them, for a day or two, my body just like shuts down. It like mm-hmm. needs the green smoothie. Right. And so it's whatever you're eating, you will want more of. And whatever you're, you don't want to eat and you stop eating it, you don't want more of it because like, I don't have a craving for pizza. And like my biggest example I give to people is cheese. People, they give us the hardest time over giving up cheese. Mm-hmm. And I guess people love cheese, agree. but I grew up in a dairy farming community. My aunt and uncle were big dairy farmers in our area. We used to get fresh cheese, fresh milk, fresh ice cream. Like literally we took the udder, put it into the ice cream machine and made the ice cream from straight from the udder. That's like how fresh everything was for us. And we made cheese that way. And I loved it all. It's great. It probably still is great, Mm -hmm. but it's because I ate it all the time. Right. And if I can give up cheese Mm -hmm. coming from a dairy background anybody can give up cheese. Trust right. me. It's, it's just, it's, it's not something you need and you won't crave it. I don't crave it. Like if it's in front of me, I don't feel any need to get it. I have cheese sticks in my fridge because my son loves it and we just can't get them off the cheese sticks. But 
when I look at it, it has no appeal to me. I don't even mm-hmm. want to just take a bite because I just, it just doesn't look good to me anymore. And that's a result of not eating it. And it's that simple. Yeah. I think, um, so people have to go through, you know, potentially a couple of weeks where that's uncomfortable and they might have to white knuckle their way through some of these cravings or things that they think that they want to have. Um, but once you, once you start eating, I don't know, just the momentum just takes you, you know, you can actually crave salads or you can crave, you know, uh, you know, much more healthy foods and people don't, don't believe that until they start and really two weeks out of a lifetime or the past, you know, 10 years, maybe more of feeling terrible is nothing. That's just a drop in the bucket of time of where you can start to start to heal and really benefit from it. So um, I want to go back kind of to the beginning. I should have maybe asked you this before, but I just started started thinking about it. We talked about some of the symptoms of dry eye, of the grittiness and obviously the dryness and that kind of thing. But what is that, how does that manifest in how people navigate their day to day? What does that do to them? Why is, you know, I'm just trying to think of maybe a listener would say, well, I'll just use, you know, eye drops and then I'll be fine. You know, what, how does it manifest in sort of the worst cases where people are affected to the point where that just doesn't cut it anymore? You know, how does it affect them day to day? Yeah. So to give you an idea of how big dry eye is, it affects about 30 million Americans. So about 10% of Americans are, they, they suffer from dry eye. So it's more wow. common than most people think, but usually it's just the typical like, oh, I just need eye drops, you know, a couple times a day. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that mentality is that eye drops don't fix anything. Right. They again, just cover up a problem, whether it be prescription eye drops or the over-the-counter eye drops that you find in the store. Eye drops are a multi, multi-billion dollar with a B industry. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason there's so many eye drops out there on the market is because it's a huge market. And that's what people think they need for dry eye. When in reality, all the diet things that we talked about will help a lot more green smoothies will help more than that eye drop will. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, you know, I'm just taking eye drops four times a day. It's not a big deal. That's a huge deal. I mean, four times a day is a lot, even taking them once a day, not as big of a deal, but still there's some reason that you're reaching for that eye drop. And it's because there's something that's starting up. There's inflammation that's starting up. There's irritation. There's something wrong and we just need to address it. And so, um, you know, a lot of people just use the drops once or twice a day, but then it can progress a lot more than that. So eye drops are the the recommended first line treatment. And for Mm -hmm. your listeners, I am doing quotations right now Yeah, (laughs) because it's not where we start our treatment. And when I see a mild sufferer like that, you know, we will inquire about diet and everything, but we always ask them about eyelid hygiene first, because we talked about earlier, those myobian mm-hmm. glands, if those myobian glands are blocked or if the oil's not being produced very well. So this is, this goes back to diet as well. Better oils going into your body, organic olive oil, organic coconut oil. Those are kind of the two we recommend means better oils coming out of the body. So you're providing your body with better building blocks by consuming omega-3s, olive oil, organic olive oil, which will make better oil coming out of the meibomian glands. When we see patients behind the microscope, those glands will look like toothpaste coming out. And that's not what you want. You want this nice shimmering oil that looks like olive oil. And that's what you want coming out of those glands because that's going to be a nice liquid oil that's going to get out on the eye surface every time you blink. Really connect those tears together. And when they connect the tears together, everything should be good. Well, if the oil is coming out like toothpaste, you're not getting that third layer of tears, which means irritations coming and then you're using eye drops. So when we analyze a tear film, we're looking for that. We're looking at the meibomian glands, we're looking at the eyelids, and then we're looking at the tear layer to see if it's breaking up faster than it should be. And so if somebody's using eye drops, I usually address their eyelid hygiene first. Even if you're not using eye drops, and even if you have no problems with dry eye, I recommend taking care of your eyelids. We, we have a product, of course, so we are biased towards this, but our, um, our Hydrate Lin Lash Cleanser, it's a hypochlorous acid eyelid cleanser. Sounds mm-hmm. crazy. I said acid. It's mm-hmm. going near my eye. But this is actually a natural complement to our immune system. So our immune system, we're actually using our body to heal our body. And so our immune system more specifically our neutrophil cells. I'm getting very deep here, but I'll come Mm -hmm. back. Our neutrophil cells release hypochlorous acid to kill bacteria and viruses. 
after it kills the bacteria and virus, it then engulfs it. It eats it. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're just aiding our immune system to help kill bacteria and viruses. So what does this have to do with dry eye? We have bacteria that live on our skin and including our eyelid skin. And so with the bacteria living on our eyelid skin, what can happen is the bacteria can become overpopulated. And when they become overpopulated, they form what's called blepharitis. I, I talked about this a little earlier. Mm-hmm. But blepharitis is simply inflammation of the eyelids, usually caused from staph bacteria that lives on our skin. And so when this bacteria becomes overpopulated, it creates more waste product. Think of like a densely populated human population versus a spread out. Mm-hmm. A densely populated one, we have waste and it's going to get nasty really quick versus right. a spread out one. And so what the hypochlorous acid does is it helps keep our immune system on top of this to reduce that bacteria load naturally. And when we reduce that bacteria load, blepharitis symptoms go away or get reduced, which means our meibomian glands work better, our eyelids function better. And so that's usually the first step that I put people on is that eyelid hygiene regimen. And it's as simple as spraying our eyelids after we wash our face with our hypochlorous acid eyelid cleanser. There's plenty on the market. We have mm-hmm. one. I am biased. Mm-hmm. But what I like to do is relate it to the dental model. Sure. And so dentists tell you to brush twice a day. And the only reason you're doing this is to reduce bacteria, reduce plaque. What does that cause? It causes cavities. So you're actually doing something every day already to prevent problems in the future. You're trying to prevent cavities from coming. That's why you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. This is the same concept. We're spraying our eyelids twice a day and it only takes five seconds versus two minutes. Right. So spray, spray, wash the eyelids, let it sit. You don't even have to wash it off. And you do that twice a day to help reduce the bacteria load to keep your tear film sufficient. Um, Does that kind of address your question? I know I kind of went off on another tangent. That's what I tend to do. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, Yeah. And I I mean, that helps a lot too. That's very interesting. And I think people maybe don't really think about the bacteria on our skin and how that affects our eyes or could affect our eyes. But I was also wondering, you know, how does dry eye affect driving and Yes. You know, working computers and, you know, cooking, any, you know, anything like that. What do you hear people complain about or what's their frustration with that? And I just didn't answer your question at all the first time. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I think it was helpful a lot. It, it's huge because um, when we're driving and when we're on our computers, when we're mm-hmm. on our phones, we're concentrating more. And when we're concentrating more, we blink less. Mm-hmm. And when we blink less, that means our tear film is going to be not as good. Because every time we blink, it's like milking our meibomian glands, releasing that oil onto our eye. Right. And so when we blink less, it, it causes more problems with that. So driving is affected. Reading is affected. You know, computer use, phone use, it's all affected. And then as it gets worse, some people, it debilitates them so much that they can't work anymore. They have to stay home. Wow. They're afraid to leave their house. They're afraid to be around their family for embarrassment. It's crazy the stories that I hear. And the successes I hear afterwards, that's like I said, the addiction part of this disease is because I love helping people with this because you take somebody that has been to every doctor and they just don't know where to turn next and their success story three months later, and it gets even better a year later. Sure. And so that's why, why we're doing what we're doing, but it can be debilitating. It can completely ruin somebody's life. And, you know, people have unfortunately committed suicide as a result of this. This, wow. this was, there was a public story from a Detroit news anchor that had such bad dry eye that she unfortunately committed suicide last year. And so a lot of people are dealing with depression and anxiety from this condition or even suicidal as a result of how debilitating this can be. And since it's so new, not every doctor knows a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And so you really, if you're suffering from dry eye, find a dry eye specialist, look for a dry eye specialist. We have a whole list on our website. And it's just something that you need to find somebody that specializes in specifically dry eye. And then of course you can always reach out to us. I mean, that's always an option too, but, um, and then if, if you are having these anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, make sure you look for help too with that Mm -hmm. because it's, it's a cascade. It can really decline your life unless we address it sooner. And that's, that's the goal of everything we teach is, you know, to get them back to a place where they can live their normal life and have these daily activities not affected by this. So yeah, it can be debilitating to, to answer your question. Wow. And I had no idea it could be that debilitating. That's, mm-hmm. that's um, enlightening. 
you know, so all the more reason to reach out to, like you said, a dry eye specialist, or um, maybe this is the time would be a good time for you to tell people how they can better connect with you. Yeah. So we actually have a digital book. It's, it's our book. It's on, pa- it's on paperback or we have okay. it on paperback. It's on mm-hmm. audible. It's Kindle. It's everywhere. Um, it's called rethinking dry eye treatment. So search Amazon for that, Perfect. or you can go to dry dry eye the dryabook.com will actually give you the digital copy of our, of our book to read. And we have videos that go along with it every chapter. Um, and if you want the audible version, that's my wife and I, um, we actually did it. If you've never done an audible book, it's very tough. Okay. <laughs> it's very, um, it's, it takes patience. I'll say that. Okay. Um, Good to and then, know. you know, our hydrate lid and lash cleanser is our hypochlorous acid cleanser that I just talked about mm-hmm. where you can spray it on your eyelids and just leave it on twice a day. You can actually, your listeners can go to free, hydrate.com freehydrate.com and they can actually get their first bottle free there they just have to pay shipping and handling but it's also on amazon as well okay awesome y'all have all the links in the show notes for people to be able to reach out to you and um you'll also have a facebook group you have um youtube let me go over those real quick yeah yeah, go for it so we do have a podcast as well it's called the dry eye show And so you can find us on iTunes, anywhere you download your podcast, you'll find us there, the dry eye show, not the letter I, like an, it's like an eyeball dry eye show. And then same thing on YouTube, the dry eye show. And then the the biggest place that we interact the most is our dry eye syndrome support community on Facebook. If you go into Facebook, type in dry eye, we're usually the first one to pop up. Um, As at the time of this recording, we have about 12,000 members in there. Um, So you can pop in there tag us and we'll, we can usually answer any question that you have in there. We also go live in that community quite a bit to answer questions. So dry eye syndrome support community on Facebook or the dry eye show on YouTube or wherever you download your podcasts. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. This is really informative. And again, it just goes to show how everything is connected in your body and, and um, dealing with inflammation will absolutely help with dry eye. And so it's just, it's just really telling that, so many things that we're trying to do in this, in this functional world of healthcare and wellness um, go hand in hand with everything else. So thank you for raising, you know, this important topic. This is really important for people to understand. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. This is great. All right. Take care.